Uh, it's a great pleasure to join you this morning. May I apologise for my delay, as uh, was indicated, we're at a few different venues today. Um, and that's an important part of uh, communicating uh, not only the actual content of the budget last night, but the, the purpose, uh, the guiding principles uh, and the motive that sits behind it. I mean, the budget uh, is part, a crucial part of our economic action strategy that aims to build a, a strong and prosperous economy for a safe and secure nation. It's a budget that calls on all of us um, to make a contribution now to help build the workforce, to create opportunities, to nurture economic growth and to ensure that we have secured brighter prospects for our future. It sets out a path back to surplus, slashes the projection for debt, which now means the money that we ask from each of you as taxpayers won't be wasted on interest payments that can help otherwise to be building our future. The budget also presents all the usual financial details, ones that you would rightfully expect. But I must pick up a point that Andrew was alluding to. These numbers have an honesty and integrity to them that has been lacking in recent years. There aren't these Herculean optimistic uh, forecasts on which a budget is built, where fictitious revenue streams are not only identified, but they're committed, they're locked in, creating a budget trajectory that gets itself out of control. Those frank projections are consistent from the projections presented in the mid-year fiscal and economic outlook, because those projections needed to be corrected. They needed to represent an honest and genuine account of our circumstances and the anticipated trends in our economy, not to create a bottom line that was opportunistic and desired for media purposes, but one that was credible, was realistic, took real account of the transition going on within our economy and built a, set, a credible and solid foundation from which to project forward what our expenditure and economic strategies needed to be. In this building some five years ago when the second phase of the Labor stimulus package was being debated, um, at 3am there was an eloquent contribution, well so at least said the Sydney Morning Herald. To my surprise it was actually from me. The point I was making at that time was that the coalition was seeking to ensure that the nation wasn't sleepwalking into a poorly designed, irresponsible and unsustainable package dreamt up by a panicked government. I said at the time the only certain outcome from the package that was being pushed through, rammed through the parliament, the wee small hours of that morning, is waking up at some point to the nightmare of decades of excessive debt and deficit. Sadly, that is what has occurred. And the budget last night was not only a wake-up call about the trajectory that our nation had been placed on, but a call to action, to change, to map a more sustainable, more credible, more predictable and sound progress and pathway for our future. We've had to come to terms with what we've inherited. There is that joke where a person's asked how to get to a particular cathedral and the answer is, well, I wouldn't have started from here, mate. But start from here we have, and the country has inherited those burdens that we foreshadowed some years ago. And that economic mismanagement, that era of missed opportunity, we need to accept and deal with. We're not going to shirk that responsibility. We need to deal with the circumstances we find ourselves in. And as the Treasurer said last night, doing nothing is not an option. The days of borrowing and spending must come to an end. It is time for all of us to contribute and build. And so that is the narrative of the budget last night, looking for us all to contribute and build, to recognise the trajectory we were on was unsustainable and damaging to our nation's and our citizens' longer-term interests. And this job of repairing the budget is the responsibility of all, and we aim to share that heavy lifting amongst all within the community and within the economy. The budget takes steps to rein in what the government itself is doing to ensure that your Commonwealth is living within its means and to rein in the age of entitlement. As many of you would know, our economy is facing considerable challenges over the medium and the longer term. The decline in our terms of trade that we've seen now is likely to be extended beyond the forecast period, 
while the rising proportion of our older citizens will lead to lower labour force participation and further constraining per capita income growth. Confronting these challenges requires faster productivity growth. And our budget supports stronger and more sustainable economic growth in the medium term and does not place further pressure on the economy's transition to a broader based growth economy in the near term. We understand the importance of confidence and that's why we are seeking to ensure that this transition is handled with care and clarity but with a purpose about what the longer term objective and the needs of our nation are. Government expenditure is being redirected to more productive uses such as expanding the investment in infrastructure and the government is introducing new measures to encourage greater workforce participation. By getting government finances under control and laying out a credible plan to fiscal repair, the government is providing businesses and households with the certainty they need to invest in their future and to make decisions about their future opportunities. Our budget will also help to keep interest rates low over time, reducing the public sector's call on resources while rebuilding the government's flexibility to respond to adverse shocks in the context of a volatile global economy. And the budget takes significant steps in transforming the government itself and its role. But just don't take my word for it. We've seen an encouraging response to our economic action strategy that was announced last night. The Business Council of Australia has said, working, for a ve working from a very difficult budgetary starting position, the government deserves credit for taking important steps to confront the long-term challenges Australia faces for an ageing population. Infrastructure Partnerships Australia said, the Commonwealth budget strikes a solid balance between the short-term pain of budget reform and the long-term national interest because it frees up the funding needed to invest in economic infrastructure to safeguard the economy. The Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry said in response to the budget last night, it goes a long way to restoring all important business confidence that will drive investment and job creation, particularly in Australia's two million small businesses that employ some seven million Australians. So we have a government has said the budget is part of an evolution towards providing enhanced opportunities for all Australians. It redirects your taxpayers' dollars from unaffordable consumption today to productive investment for our future. It will do this while supporting our citizens that are most vulnerable and the beginning of the task of ensuring that our government lives within its means. It delivers structural reforms that will facilitate growth in living standards whilst not placing additional near-term pressures on the economy. The decisions embodied in the budget last night improved the underlying cash balance by $36 billion over the five years to 2017-2018, including $18.5 billion in 2017-2018. The size of government has been substantially reduced over the forward estimates, with the ratio of payments to GDP falling from 25.9% in 2013-14 to 24.8% in 2017-18 with further reductions projected out to 2024-25. And the budget repair strategy is designed to, to deliver budget surpluses to at least 1% of GDP by 2023-24. It's not overnight. That transformation would have been too harsh and too much of a shock but there is a clear plan and a conviction to achieve the 1% GDP surplus by 2023-24, with the government more than offsetting all new spending measures with decisions to reduce outlays elsewhere in the budget. And we've been able to achieve this through a number of methods, including a temporary budget repair levy, a reduction in the footprint of government, an infrastructure growth package, and a, a range of other initiatives. As I said earlier, from 1 July 2014 until 30 June 2017, there will be a temporary budget repair levy of 2% of individuals' taxable income above $180,000. This measure, this uplift in the highest tax bracket for income earners, will raise an estimated $3.1 billion over the forward estimates period. 
This will mean that an individual on a taxable income of $300,000 a year will pay an additional $2,400 in tax for each of the next three years. The public sector will be streamlined to focus on the areas where the Commonwealth Government involvement is necessary. The Government has an ongoing process, including in these budget measures, where we've abolished 70 bodies and boards, committees and councils, which have created inefficiencies within the public sector, and we aim to streamline accountabilities. Rigorous scrutiny of the Government program seen a reduction in red tape, $50,000 of regulations, we were going to have a bonfire of those regulations, but I can't begin to tell you how many permits that would have required. We are conducting reviews into the future ownership of Australian Hearing, the Defence Housing Authority, the Royal Australian Mint, the Investment uh, the Security ASICS uh, Register Function, and also uh, uh, other particular areas of seeing whether contestable service delivery will deliver benefits to our country. There is a Medicare co-payment. This is an area where taxpayers currently fund 263 million free services under Medicare. The numbers show this is clearly unsustainable. While many Australians already contribute to the cost of visiting their GP, from July 1 next year the government will be asking all Australians to contribute to their healthcare costs. Previously bulk billed patients can expect to make a contribution of at least $7 to the cost of most visits to GP and out of hospital pathology and diagnostic imaging services. And I know Labor's had a lot to say about this. The Shadow Treasurer and the Shadow Assistant Treasurer appear to be at loggerheads over this issue. In 2003, Andrew Lee, the now Shadow Assistant Treasurer, said, and I quote, there's a better way of operating a health system and the change should hardly hurt at all. As economists have shown, the ideal model involves a small co-payment, not enough to put a dent in your weekly budget but enough to make you think twice before you call the doc. An idea that's hardly radical was his view. The other measures around the infrastructure growth package will activate an extraordinary investment in improvement in our infrastructure. We've seen incentives put before Commonwealth and state and local governments to look at their own assets, to see what they can do, along with the private sector, to build over $125 billion of additional infrastructure. An asset recycling initiative. <laughs> We're just having a conversation about whether that was a mark of approval for the recycling initiative <laughs> or not, or whether there was some other message being communicated to me. Um, but that pipeline of capital works in, in infrastructure is crucial as we get to the end of the mining and resources construction phase, and we have extraordinary capacity that we need to effectively deploy to improve commerce, to support growth and to expand economic opportunities across our continent. The measures for small business are numerous. A company tax cut, that'll be of advantage to many small businesses structured through an incorporated body. The Small Business and Enter Family Enterprise Ombudsman, a measure designed to support with dispute resolution, uh, advocacy within government, uh, a more small business friendly approach by our regulators and a single entry point to get information about government assistance. Government procurement, an important measure to make sure small businesses have a legitimate, legitimate and real opportunity to access Commonwealth procurement market. It's an important area of work that is often too difficult to navigate and overwhelming in terms of the conditions imposed upon those seeking some of the government procurement action. Unfair contracts, an important initiative to ensure that the ACCC can support the extension to small business of unfair, contact, unfair contract provisions that are currently available to consumers and restart an incentive, a payment, a subsidy of $10,000 to employers to hire eligible mature age people. There are a range of other measures that are designed to support enterprise and the longer term economic prospects of our country. It is about sustainability of our financial position and about real growth and future opportunities for our nation. It is about saying to all of us, you've called for longer term thinking in government for years. You've said, why won't our national leaders take a longer term perspective? What is it about tomorrow's headlines when our next generation's future seems to be less prevalent in the discourse and the dis discussions in this building and elsewhere. Well, we've done that. We've taken a longer term view. We are investing in our future and we ask you all to help make a contribution. 
Last night was a significant moment. The nation decided it will change track. We will work to secure our future and the prospects, not only of our citizens today, but for our nation's future. We will all have to make a contribution, and I'm grateful for the advice and counsel that many of you give me. I hope we can count on you being part of the work needed to make our nation all that it can be and to make this change of track and change of trajectory that is so essential for our nation's future. Thanks for a few minutes of your time this morning.